they could be very, very charming, and that could be good to a certain degree. But after a while, it gets to be too much. Okay, well, what another, makes the charming? Another, what makes the, let me say this yeah, part. What ahead. makes the charming part not good is because it comes along with other characteristics. That's why it comes with other behaviors. If they were just charming by them by itself, then there's nothing wrong with that. It's the other stuff that come yeah. along with it. So just because somebody's charming, yeah. I don't mean they're narcissistic. Yes, and we're going to share one of the, in the things movie. that they have. Yeah. Go ahead. No, I'm finished. Go ahead. Okay. Okay, number two, because we're not going to go through all of these. We're just going to share. Another one, they can hog the conversation, talking about how great they are. Mm-mm-mm. All righty, then. I know people like that. I'm glad you specified. I'm glad you specified about that. So when they hog in the conversation, because you could be hogging the conversation conversation because you're passionate about a subject matter. But if it's all about you, then I understand. If it's the person, the person is hogging the conversation because they're constantly talking about themselves. I understand how that's narcissistic. Yeah, yeah. I'm just, I just want to share a sentence real quick to elaborate a little bit more on that. They love to constantly talk about their own accomplishments and their achievements with grand doses. What's that word where it's like big, it be grand bigger than life? There we go, bigger than life. Okay, they do this because they feel better and smarter than everyone else. And also because it helps them create a appearance of being self-assured. Okay. And number three, they feed off your compliments. The statistics may seem like they're super, super confident, but most of the time they really actually like Lack self esteem. They need a lot of praise. And if you're not giving it to them, they'll fish for it. That's why they're constantly looking at you to tell them how great they are. Lord have mercy. I need to stop reading. Okay. I <laughs> forgot to say that so, we live in a narcissistic society, too. I forgot to mention that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's easy for a lot of people it. to give in to that. You know, they actually hunger yeah. for it. Yes. Oh, some wait, people I hunger for it and they don't more. even know it. Yeah. Number four, they lack empathy. Lack of empathy or the ability to feel how another person is feeling is one of their hallmark. Y'all know the hallmark curve? One of their hallmark characteristics of a narcissistic. Uh, they lack the skill to make you feel seen, validated, understood, or accepted because they don't grasp the concept of feeling. People can't go with that deep. Number five, they don't have any or many long-time friends. <laughs> Most narcissists won't have any long-time real friends. Dig deeper into their connections, and you may notice that they only have casual acquaintances, buddies. They trash talk and nemesis. Now, we're going to go into the movies to give details. Well, part of the reason, I I'm just gonna, wanted to say, part of the reason yeah. why they don't have friends is because they don't get along with people. Because, you know, you you can't mix that up because they got some people that don't okay. have long-term friends because they're just introverted and they're not a social okay, person. Yes. But that don't mean they're narcissistic. Yes. But the person that's right. n- that under the narcissistic category is because they don't get along with folks, you know. Right. And they, people don't and they like trying to get along. Because they, yeah, it's, they don't, pe- they rub people wrong, like all the time. Like they don't have no filter. And they make you feel uncomfortable, <laughs> so that's why people don't want to be around them. Right. So, as Vicky has stated earlier, we, you know, from, you know, we were doing it in the past, but we want to go back to that. That's part of our platform. That whatever social issue we talk about, we try to use the media to back up what we're saying. So, we're going we to use the media. Tem- we're not using that word try. Yes. Oh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, we did a show about that. No, we did a show about Sorry, Never mind. Temptation. Confessions <laughs> we of need a to do one counselor. about try. <laughs> <laughs> Temptation, Confessions of a Marriage Counselor by Tyler Perry. I tell you, Tyler Perry is an awesome, um, gifted man, I tell you. So, uh, Vicki, you want to, you know, share a little bit about the movie, and then we'll get into the traits that we saw in the movie. You want to give a little synopsis of the well, movie? Well, um, Tyler Perry, um, the movie is Temptation and it's about a couple, a black young couple 
who were from the from the south part of the country, um, <clears throat> and they moved to I believe New York or they moved on the East Coast, and um, they and they were high school sweethearts. Yeah, they were high school sweethearts, so they had been together for a really long time since they were little. I think they were probably, I don't know if they were like in their late 20s, early 30s or somewhere no, there. Yes, you're doing wonderful, but they actually grew up together. They were little kids in church, so yeah. Yeah, they grew up. Okay, okay. 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 And so, okay. Okay. Um, yeah, so anyway, um, at this point in time in their life, where they when they moved back east uh, after they got married or whatever, they um, started noticing that they were growing apart. Um, the wife, she felt like, you know, are we talking about that word bored? She act like she felt like she was bored in her relationship, bored in her life. She really wanted to do something else with her life. And she was, what she was doing, she was bored with it because she was a therapist. Wasn't she like a therapist? And she wanted yeah, her own practice. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, so they had, you know, when they got married, they had discussed how uh, they had plans for their life, and he was going to go work at the pharmacy, which he was already doing, and it was already discussed that after so many years, then they were going to take the time to put it into her uh, because she had went to school to be a marriage therapist, but because they had this plan and they were going to focus on him first, she had to put that on hold, and she ended up uh, getting a job as a um, a firm with matchmaking, and she was like the uh, therapist for the for the firm when they bring in clients. So after a while, she kind of started getting bored and felt like she wasn't really fulfilling her dream and she was focused on her husband. But I just want to ask this, that in the movie, Brandy was also in the movie, and she had shared with the husband um, when everything started unraveling that, because he was like, what did I do wrong? I missed the sign. And she basically said, uh, you didn't do anything wrong, but when somebody, when a man comes, when a man starts giving a woman extra attention, I'm put, I'm adding to it, that they don't usually get at home, that's when stuff starts happening. I, I, you know, I have to admit that might be a little truth in that. You know, if, you, if, you, if it ain't being taken care of at home, and you going out there and somebody else giving you attention, you know, hey. But so, I don't think that's an excuse. I don't think that's a good excuse that for it to be able to, for him right. to be, you know, her to get away with, I mean, you know, an excuse for her to do that or to say, oh, well, you weren't giving me attention at home. So he gave me attention and I decided to move forward, you know, and have an affair because we didn't even touch on that yet. But, um, yeah, she had to end up paying the price but, for that. So you got to be careful. So, yes, go ahead. DJ Dika moved into the part about um, the husband asking Brandy for advice, but the husband worked at the pharmacy and Brandy was, um, was she a customer or she worked there? I can't remember. She was, she was going to work there. Okay. So that's how Brandy came into it. But the husband, so the point is, is that, like I said, they, um, uh, the wife got bored and she got tired of her husband. Like got t- she was getting tired of the relationship. She got tired of her life. She felt like she wanted some excitement. And um, her job kind of provided a different atmosphere than her home. Because even though they was raised in the church, she was, they were not church going. They weren't a church going couple. The mother was a devout Christian, but the um, daughter didn't even really talk about church at all like I don't even think they went to church in the movie um but and then um um, okay but but what I want to say is that when she was at work she ended up um meeting this guy um that came in and actually because um what's that girl's name Kardashian was actually in the movie as well Kim Kardashian Kardashian, and Kim Kardashian um, bro was her boss. And so, oh, she was an assistant or something. What was she like? A, um, yeah, she just, Vanessa Williams was her boss. Vanessa was, Williams was, was a co worker. Yes. Uh, Kim but Kardashian had was her co worker. 
and she kind of had influence over her because she was, you know, saying like how she dressed or she changed her way she dressed. You know, she kind of got peer pressure at work. And so I used, I brought up Kim Kardashian because so you can see the dynamic because the, the girl, um, the wife, she kind of dressed very conservative and, you know, not so contemporary. Um, for those who don't understand that, maybe you can say she dressed boring. She dressed Homie. She was homie. dressed like she was homie. Okay. Yeah, but everybody don't know that, so mm-hmm. I'm just giving different examples. Okay. And so okay. um <laughs> so out of date, you know, she dressed older for her age. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, and so go. um yeah, so anyway when that her. guy when she was given that guy as an assignment, um, she began to get attracted by him. He kinda flirted or whatever, but she started yeah, getting attracted up. to him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He started it. Back to that narcissistic stuff. Uh, he was a big time client, but he was also going to invest in the company. And when the movie uh, starts or the judges, he could have talked to Vanessa Williams. He could have talked to Kim Kardashian. And compared to her, they both were dressed to the T and they were very attractive. And he was feeling her. So at the end of the day, he didn't care about how Vanessa Williams dressed or Kim Kardashian dressed. Uh, the the main character in the movie Judith caught his attention. So and do you know down. why? Do you know why she caught his attention? Uh, why he caught her attention? Why he why she caught his attention? Mm-hmm. Is that what you mean? Yeah. No, yep. you can share. Well, because she was a vic, she he recognized the victim. Oh, because yes, you're right. We, we saying all that to say because he had narcissistic, um, he was narcissistic. He was straight out narcissistic. He didn't even have part of it. He had like almost the whole <laughs> gamut of narcissistic. He probably was, he probably could be diagnosed as a narcissistic personality. And so people that have that, they're attracted to people that are codependent or, um, What's the other word I'm looking for? Or, or, um, or feel like they could be victimized or they're victims or whatever. Is yeah, like they're easily say? persuaded. They, you know, they look yes. like they weak-minded and, you know, or yes. maybe maybe not even weak-minded, but they, they need help. You know what I'm saying? Like they can easily control them. And, um, yes. Yeah, so and he was a that's boy. why he chose her because she, the way she carried herself, she kind of had her her self esteem wasn't it was kind of low, you know. She um she didn't really like she was professional in her area, but that was it. Like socially, she was you could tell that she was lacking some things. So he seen yeah, an opportunity. He was like yeah. he that was so, one of the things he was. He was an opportunist. And he's seen an opportunity with her. He didn't see no opportunity with Vanessa Williams. He didn't see no opportunity with Kim Kardashian. He knew that was going to be a competition thing. But he didn't see no competition with her. He seen a way that he can control her. So, so let's go back to our, 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 yes, let's go back to our little, some of the things we talked about to relate back to the movie. So you know how, ladies and gentlemen, listeners, we're talking about charming, being charming AF. You know, he was charming, I'm telling you. If I didn't know, you know, if I didn't know the part of the movie, I said, man, 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 man. Anyway, he was charming her. He was feeding her ego. And then she kept trying to be professional, stick to the point. And then his narcissistic stuff really came out because he was like, example, movie. He was like, don't I know you? She was like, no. Yes, I do. And he kept pushing it. And he was like, don't you run, uh, blah, 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 blah. And then she was like, oh, yeah, and I be you uh, running up, be running, and, and then you be running. Uh, it's so many words, like, he's so cute. Like, you know he's cute. So he be running with his shirt off, making sure everybody see him. So she kind of said that. You know, you be running to try to get the lady's attention. And then he, his narcissistic part came out, and he was like, oh, so you notice me? So that goes back to number two. When we was talking about, they want to talk about how great they are. So he was all happy, his chest all out. Oh, so you notice me? So because mm-hmm, it says preoccupation with fantasies of unlimited success, 
power, brilliance, 